Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am going to review Huda Beauty's Glowish Collection's newest products. So that is going to be the Luminous Press Powder. I have two shades of these. And then I also picked up two shades of the Cheeky Vegan Blush Powder. So if you want to see my thoughts on these, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. And the Glowish line by Huda Beauty is always so intriguing to me. They haven't come out with much. They've only had one launch prior to this, but everything they've come out with has always caught my eye, made me turn my head a little bit. I just need you guys to know I did not shake out my dry shampoo and that is why my scalp is white. And it's gonna be that way the whole video so uh i know you can't unsee it now but i just need to acknowledge that <laughs> and you know what i didn't even notice it until now like when i started editing i was like so um enjoy the video and this launch was no different. So one thing I didn't even realize about the Glowish by Huda Beauty, but I watched her video and she said that this is her sustainable makeup brand. So everything from the packaging is made from PCR, which on the back of the box, it says post-consumer recycled materials, as well as even the ingredients within the product are sustainable. So very interesting. I don't know how I missed that, but yeah, really cool. And everything looks super pretty to me. So I I'm actually going to start off by talking about shipping really quickly. I think a lot of you have appreciated when I've added this in. So I ordered these products from the Huda Beauty website the day that they launched. Normally I am a Sephora kind of gal when it comes to ordering, but if you're ordering online, the Huda Beauty order came next day. Normally Sephora takes two days if I pay for expedited shipping. I didn't even have to pay for expedited shipping and I got it the next day. And I think it came packaged a little bit more secure than Sephora. Sephora normally only has like two pieces of paper inside to protect the products, which normally I have decent luck with Sephora shipping. I don't think they're terrible, but with really fragile products, the shipping with Sephora can be sketchy, but I like the packaging that the Huda stuff came in. It came in double bubble wrap, really, this bubble wrap bag, and then wrapped in bubble wrap. So I think that the products were pretty protected. If you're planning on ordering online, I think that the Huda Beauty website for me now might be the way to go. Fast shipping, free shipping, and extra protection. Now these products are also available on Sephora right now and also in Sephora stores. So maybe see if there's one by you so you don't have to wait for shipping. I will have all the links down below for you to purchase from. And without further ado, we are gonna start off by covering the Luminous Pressed Powder. So these products are going to be $33. There are 13 shades in the line. I picked up two shades light and light medium I have no clue why I thought picking up light medium would be a good idea because I picked up light medium in the multi-do skin tint and this was way too dark on me so I'm happy I ended up picking up the light because this looks like it's actually gonna be the right color on me so this is a smoothing and blurring luminous pressed powder that gives you coverage without the cake with a blendable light formula I'm going to try applying this in a variety of ways I don't know if they want to use this yet as a setting powder or as a powder foundation so that's kind of what I want to play with here this product it's vegan it's cruelty free it's fragrance free made in Italy and has a 12 month shelf life you also get 10 grams of product all right let's test it out so let me show you the packaging really quickly so it comes in this clear plastic packaging I really love this packaging I love that you can see the product it's really sleek and small it's it feels like plastic but I really don't mind that I love this packaging something about it is so modern it's the same packaging as the soft radiance bronzer but obviously it is clear so let me show you the shade light first which I think is going to be my shade Ooh, it feels really really silky that's what the light shades going to look like and let's get into light medium here's what light medium looks like super silky but doesn't seem to have powdery fallout. You can see how shiny that is and it is significantly darker than the light. So here is light, 
and here's light medium next to one another. Now, if you aren't sure of what shade to get and you have previously had the glowish tint, I just want to see how the light medium compares to the light medium glowish tint. Here's the light medium glowish tint. Honestly, the glowish tint's a bit darker than the light medium powder, but powder obviously you can get away with it being a little bit lighter, but that's just how it would compare. I have watched Huda's demo on how she likes to apply these at a powder foundation. She prefers to use a sponge. I'm going to try that and then I'm also going to try it with a brush just to see the difference in application. Again, I'm not sure if I want to use this as a powder foundation yet, so we'll, we'll see. Let me swatch light medium on my face. That's really dark. <laughs> Honestly though, it could match me now because I'm a little bit tanned, but it's, it's not my perfect shade. This is the light. Yeah, light is definitely the way to go. I feel like I could use almost as like a bronzer. So I, my face right now has nothing on it as you can see, I've been experimenting with some new skincare lately and I have really sensitive skin. So we're having a bit of a reaction. It's fine, it's fine. But I prepped my skin only with the e.l.f. Holy Hydration Face Cream, which I've been loving for makeup prep. And I'm going to try first with the Refer 31 brush. This is going to be a new brush in their holiday collection and it's phenomenal for liquid foundation, but it's a buffing brush. It has a flat top, so we're going to use this as a foundation brush for the powder. So I'm just going to go in like this. I don't know if you can see, there's a little bit of powder fallout, but nothing crazy. And I wanted to make sure that my face was really hydrated because if you're using a powder foundation, it's going to be drying. Um, and the moisture of your skin is also going to help the product grab on. Okay, this is very, very luminous. It almost reminds me of an hourglass ambient powder. If you were to use a dense brush to apply it, obviously the ambient powders don't have this kind of coverage, but it is a similar finish. She's very, very glowy. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit glowier than I would like and I mean that's similar to the glowish multi dew skin tint this I felt like the tin man in and it says it blurs pores that is not the case <laughs> this is definitely not blurring my pores it is emphasizing them I think I'm gonna prefer this as a setting powder I really don't know what skin this is going to look good on like if you have flawless skin and you're looking for a nice glowy evening of the skin you might really like this powder, but if you have any pores, I don't know about this. Let's try it the way that she likes to apply it. So I have this wet Iconic London sponge. Ugh, I hate putting a wet sponge into powder, but let's see. Let's see how it covers my friends. <laughs> this is the perfect shade for me, by the way. So if you have my skin tone, light is the way to go. Listen, you guys, I don't hate it. I really, really don't. Something about the sponge, I think, gives it more of a foundation-like effect. So if you're gonna use this as a foundation powder, I would use a sponge, but I hate how a sponge makes the texture of the powder in the pan. It's not terrible, but it's not for me. I have way too much texture to be using this as a powder foundation. Let me try the light medium as a bronze. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this to myself, but I just want to see if it can add some definition. Yeah, honestly, this is a pretty bronzer. It's probably not as pretty as the actual glowish bronzer, but I'm going to use it as such for a glowy look. Out of curiosity, let me see how the finish differs from the bronzer. It's definitely, the pressed powder definitely feels a lot more silky. Oh, they're very, very different. The bronzer is definitely more matte. This has a more powdery feel, completely different. So I'm gonna keep that light medium as a soft bronzer. I mean, I kind of suspected that this would happen, hence why I didn't put any other products on my face. It doesn't look flattering for my skin type. Really, you have to have poreless skin to be able to rock this as a powder foundation foundation because I mean even on camera my pores have never looked more emphasized not very blurring let me put it this way if you tried the glowish skin tint and you liked it alone on your skin I think you will really like this powder foundation if you didn't like that skin tint alone on your skin you're not gonna like this as a powder foundation maybe as a setting powder I do want to try it as that but for me, I'm sorry, this is a fail in terms of being a powder foundation. Huda, I don't know, girl. I, I don't think I would have marketed 
this as such. So I'm going to go off camera. I am going to put on a mixture of the glowish skin tint. And this is too glowy for me, like I said, so I'm gonna mix in something a little bit more dry. This is the Morphe Filter Medium. We're gonna put these on, and I'm going to try this as a finishing powder. So here's a close-up of how the foundation's looking. Keep in mind, it's going to be an, a little bit more reflective than it would be in real life because I do have lights directed at my face right now. But nonetheless, you don't want to look like this if a light were to hit your face. Okay, I'll be back. I need to remove this. <laughs> All right, guys. So I just threw on my eye makeup. I also did set my face, just the T-zone area, with my Kosas Cloud Set Powder in the shade Feathery. And I want to use this more as a finishing powder. So I just don't see myself setting my under eyes with this because it really is so glowy. Now, honestly, this had so much potential as a powder foundation. The way that it sat on the face was so pretty. It was just that finish. It was just a, not a wee bit but it was just too glowy if we had taken it down like two three steps i think it would have been a really nice powder foundation because i really did like the way that it looked as it sat on the skin it's just when the light hit or not even when the light hit i took a step away from the light you still could see my pores from a mile away. But seriously, if you have poreless skin, it will look beautiful on your skin. So I'm gonna use the Refer Number no. 3 brush. This is another brush that's gonna be in their holiday collection and it's perfect for finishing powder because the bristles are longer so it's not going to be too dense. But this has just enough bristles that it's dense enough to pick up the powder but it's not going to buff it into the skin. It's just going to set the skin. You can see what that wet sponge did. I'm not happy about that. But I'm gonna put some on my brush and let's finish the face. I don't have a bronzer or anything on but I just want to see how this looks. And the outsides of my face are not set. It really is just the t-zone area where the pores are the most prominent. So I didn't want to press this powder into those areas. Let's take a closer look. Much, much better like this. This is the way that I think you have to use this. This did add an overall glow to the face. It looks much better like this. Let me use a MAC 133 brush. This is more dense and just want to see if we use a more dense brush, can you almost use it as like a highlight? Maybe not a highlight, but it intensifies the glow in the area of the face and you can't get more natural than that. But I will say it definitely just made the texture look 20 times worse where I apply. This does not look good on texture, straight up, point blank. Like, it's making my texture look terrible. So if you have a lot of milia on your face and bumps, the only way that this will really work for you is if you use a very not dense brush and just lightly glaze it over the skin. I'm gonna take the light medium shade. I'm going to use my Esum V49 brush, which is more dense than the setting powder brush that I used. I don't know, I kind of really like this as a bronzer. It's very, very subtle on me, but it looks really good as like a glowy bronzer. And I think because it's a little bit deeper, it's not gonna emphasize the texture as much. Whereas the light shade, I mean, this is all I can see. It, this was so close to being good. So close, but not quite there. Okay, let's do the blush now. So these guys are called the Glowish Cheeky Vegan Blush Powders. So they're gonna come in just plain white packaging. Let's see, these are a velvety powder blush with a marbled formula that was developed to give all skin tones a beautifully natural fat fresh faced flush fresh faced flush that's hard to say of color with a soft focus glow these are 21 dollars each a good amount cheaper than the pressed powder but here they are comparing by size this has 2.5 grams of product whereas the powder has 10 grams of product so this has four times the amount of powder i wish these were a tad bigger maybe along the same size as the bronzer which has eight grams of product yeah this is really small mm. i mean it's a blush so i don't mind i don't use too much blush anyways but i do wish it was a wee bit more now there's only four shades i picked up the two lighter ones because obviously i I'm a light person and these are made in Italy and they have an 18 month shelf life so if you're familiar with the soft radiance bronzer you can see it does have that marbled effect so let me first swatch healthy peach for you now this does feel drier like the bronzer not in a bad way and you can see it doesn't have too much pigmentation and then let me swatch number two caring coral for you 
This one is definitely brighter. Those two swatch very, very different from one another. So again, this is Healthy Peach. This is Caring Coral. They definitely feel like around the same formula as the bronzer. I would say maybe they feel a touch creamier, but that might just be because this is older and the blushes are fresher. So let's start off with number one, Healthy Peach. I'm using my Sigma brush cleaner to make sure I have no product in my brush. So I'm going to use a blinged brush F14. These definitely don't have the same glow as the setting powders. Uh, this one is really great if you're fair. On me, you can see it's not really, it's not giving me what I would like. It's really, really subtle, but I am like going ham on this product. And it's not a lot of product in these blushes in general. I built it up to get to a decent point. That took a little bit too much digging for my preference. However, if you're very heavy handed or you are quite fair, I think that's going to be a really good color for you. And I don't mind that because there's only four shades in this launch. So I think it's okay to have something really, really sheer like this for the lighter end of the skin tone spectrum. Okay, let's do a carrying coral on this other cheek. Yeah, this one has more pigment, but again, I can still go heavy handed in here, but it is building up a little bit faster. I'd be interested to see if the other two shades build up faster, but again, still, you can use a heavy hand with this. And I do like how where I heavily put the setting powder, how it's peeking through underneath the blush. And the blush is not emphasizing texture anywhere near as close as the setting powder. That setting powder is just crazy luminous. I would say this almost helped subdued a little bit. I, I think it blurred a touch, nothing crazy, but yeah, it definitely brought down that setting powder. So these have a pretty finish to them. It did blur the skin a little bit while still holding a glow. God, this one's gotta go, like you have to leave friend. And I do like how I put this heavy layer of the setting powder underneath, even though it made my skin look terrible. Putting that blush on top kind of minimized it for me. My only critique really is I should not have picked up the Healthy Peach shade. It's just too sheer for me. You can see it's a little bit more orange and you can see the coral shade is more pinky. So I do like that I can see the two different colors on my face. They don't look the same. But this one, if you have a light medium skin tone like myself, I don't think this one will show up on you. You definitely wanna go carrying coral and up. But I like these. I don't love these. I think I'm happy to have them. I don't regret picking them up, but they aren't this groundbreaking product. So I am going to put my lips on and get myself and my thoughts together and I'll be right back. All right, you guys. So here are my final honest thoughts about these products. So we'll start off with the setting powder. I definitely think there are pros to it, but for my particular skin type, the cons definitely outweigh the pros. I will continue using these. I do like the light medium as a very natural bronzer and I don't mind using the light as an all-over setting powder but I am using these products because I already have them. They don't really add anything to my makeup collection. I will say I don't have too many products that quite work like these, but for me, I don't need products like these. I think if you have very good skin, you might really like this, but even if you have a dry skin type, I just don't think it's gonna look that good. You have to have really great skin in order for this to look really great, and I think, as far as using it as a finishing powder, I'd rather just stick to my hourglass powders. Granted, these are $33 as opposed to an hourglass, which is way more expensive. So if you cannot afford an hourglass finishing powder and you want that all over glowy finishing powder, this actually might be the route that you want to go. But for me, I'm not moved by it. Now the blushes are a solid, like they're okay for me. I'm going to update you guys in the comment section down below about the wear time on these products, particularly paying attention to the blush because I wanna tell you about the longevity of them because that kind of changed my mind, you know? I think they're pretty. I think all four shades are going to stand out on their own. $21 doesn't hurt the wallet terribly bad compared to other high-end products. But for me, again, this is another product where I feel like they don't add anything to my collection. They are really nice blushes and I really do feel like the fault of the Luminous Setting Powder, these corrected, they helped kind of blur my skin a little bit more, bring them back to earth. But I think 
what is going to determine whether or not these are worth it for me is going to be the longevity. If these have a fabulous longevity, I will recommend these. If these have an average to below average longevity, I don't think they're necessary. So yeah, I mean, none of these products were bad, but they just weren't products that I feel that I needed or that I loved or had an amazing experience with. So I hope that this video was helpful for you and that you enjoyed it. Make sure you guys stay subscribed for more reviews and updates and product updates and all that good stuff. Thank you guys so much for being subscribed to my channel and liking this video and I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one. Thank <laughs> you.